Hello, everybody. Welcome to week two. You're already probably in week two. And uh, I'm actually here in uh, beautiful Denver, Colorado, as you can obviously see from my hotel room. But uh, no, we're actually here with uh, the elders um, of our church, and we're visiting another uh, church that uh, our church partners and relates with and has close relationship with and uh, it's really fun just hanging out with their team and uh, just dreaming together learning from each other and uh, getting to know each other better so it's uh, great um, to, to do something like this but at the same time uh, I have to uh, get a little creative with when I do my grading and when I make my videos so here I am but uh, just while I'm here just encourage you guys uh, Whenever you get, hopefully many of you are already involved in churches, but uh, and and are are getting uh, experience with just how church leadership works. Um, with many of you wanting to go into full time ministry, but as much as you can, build into your local church, but then also expose yourself to other churches and partner with other churches, which is obviously very biblical. So uh, yeah, just a shout out that to just a shout out to you about that. Uh, to encourage you guys and uh, yeah so while I get rolling here I want to update you guys with a few things this week one is exam one many of you did great many of you did not great and uh, we have many more uh, weekly exams or quizzes whatever you want to call them left in the course but um, I don't want you guys to freak out but I also want you guys that did not do well um, to please email me or call me ask me if you have any clarification on how the exams will work. Most of them will look a lot like that first one did. So if you are confused about, you know, how to study or if if you feel like you got anything correct that you didn't get credit for, you'll notice that there are a number of uh, blanks, like fill in the blanks, in addition to mostly multiple choice on the exams. So if you think that you wrote the right answer, maybe you misspelled it or something and the, uh, the grader didn't give you credit, please let me know. I can go back in and check but you need to let me know. So if you didn't get credit, um, it, it's uh, up to you. If you think that there may have been something that you got wrong, just give me a quick email and I'll be happy to check for you. Uh, this week, um, similar thing with the with the uh, exam. It'll go off of your, your reading and the lectures that you watch. So um, look out for a number of questions on eras, uh, E-R-A, era, eras. There'll be some uh, blanks on uh, fill in the blank, like uh, complete the sentence, this era was blah, 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 blah. So just uh, that those won't, some of those won't be matching. So pay particular attention to those as you study. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if you got confusion, let me know. So then uh, the discussion, most of you guys did really well on week one with the discussion. I thought your initial posts, you guys really uh, put, the good, put a good amount of effort in. If you didn't, um, you know, see what other people did and uh, learn from that. You'll probably get docked a point or so. I was pretty lenient the first week, but I'm going to be uh, a little bit more strict in the, the weeks to come. And if you don't see your score yet, don't worry. Um, just because of traveling and stuff, I haven't posted your, those scores yet. But uh, most of you guys did really well. I really enjoyed watching you guys uh, interact on those discussions. Uh, those were very fruitful. And if you didn't see, I, I posted a pretty chunky post myself just to direct you guys um, a little bit further on that. So, um, yeah, so have fun this week. We're, uh, we're talking a lot about uh, Jesus' humanity versus divinity. So I want you guys to flesh, well, what's the significance of that? The God-man. Why Jesus' manhood as a being a human being is as significant as his divinity, being fully God and fully man. And how we can observe how people or ministries or churches or cultures emphasize maybe one, excuse me, one or the other at times and how that affects things. So um, really, really hone in on, on that. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you some probably direction here sometime this weekend as you finish up. And then uh, this aspect of uh, how unbelievers see Jesus. One thing I'd like you guys to explore, if you guys haven't already, is I've noticed that regardless of how controversial Jesus is or how to the point and how he just he ruffled a lot of people's feathers he didn't back off from any argument he oftentimes didn't approach things the way people expected him to he oftentimes didn't um, 
answer questions directly. He'd respond with another question. He'd leave things open-ended. But he sure didn't shy away from anything, did he? At the same time, uh, our culture tends to still see Jesus as someone of love. You can often see someone trying to justify uh, a particular viewpoint or a lifestyle or something uh, by saying, well, but Jesus would have still loved, which is true. But at the same time, uh, what are we supposed to learn from that? I think one of the things I'd like you guys to observe is that Jesus never backed off from anything. Um, and at the same time, he, um, he made a priority to always be loving. So how can we continue to be very, very bold and strong on the right things while not forgetting the lifestyle of love? Somehow Jesus didn't back off or shy away from a single thing that the Father had asked him to do or to be, and yet he's remembered for being so incredibly loving. Um, so maybe flesh that out a little bit in your discussions. Uh, what else did I want you guys to hone in on here? I think that's the, the main stuff uh, this week. So bless you guys, and uh, enjoy the tons of reading and the, the discussions and uh, I'll be interacting with you guys and give me a email or a call if you have any questions. All right, bye.